For you Warlock mains out there who are looking for one of the best support builds in the game to take into Legend Onslaught, look no further because this Phoenix Protocol Warlock build is going to help you out tremendously. We're currently doing an Onslaught build series here on the channel, so if you want some of the best builds to take the activity for all classes, be sure to subscribe. Let's not waste any time and dive right into it. So the exotic that the build is going to focus around is the Phoenix Protocol. With its perk, Battle Hearth kills an assist that you make while standing in your well ratings return super energy. Now, this is only only going to be up to 50% of your super energy, but that does give it a very fast cooldown for your next well, and as long as you and your team are creating orbs of power and getting kills, doing damage, you're going to get the next well pretty quickly. Under the Dawnblade subclass, we have a couple of different options in regards to abilities and fragments, but first up, let's talk about the super. Obviously, toss on well of radiance because that's what we need to even use the exotic, but as we know, well is really good for support and it's going to be extremely helpful for Legend Onslaught. For abilities, I'm going to be going with the Healing Rift here with Burst Glide, but you can use what you want. For melees, I personally like Incinerator Snap, but you can use Celestial Fire. Either one works here. And then for the grenade, we're opting for the Healing Grenade. For our aspects, first up is Touch of Flame. And as we know, this gives a variety of bonuses to grenades with the Healing Grenade in particular. It improves the strength of cure and restoration effects applied to you. And then consuming a Healing Grenade with Heat Rises also applies restoration to nearby allies. The main thing is that the healing grenade will give us restoration times two, which we're gonna need for survivability purposes. Now for your second aspect for this setup, you can either go with Icarus Dash for the in-air dodge for movement, or you can use Heat Rises. You know, this will allow you to fire your weapons and throw your grenades and melees while you're in the air. You can also consume it to get Heat Rises and also get melee energy back from getting in-air kills. So we do have that option as well. For this setup, you can use either one. For fragments, first up, Ember of Empyrean. This one's very important. So the solar weapon and ability final blows will extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects applied to you. It is minus 10 to resilience. And as we know, we're gonna get restoration times two from the healing grenade paired with touch of flame, but we're gonna gain radiant from Flint Striker on the artifact here. So those rapid solar weapon precision hits and final blows will give us radiant. And as long as we continue to get kills, with our abilities or weapons, we can keep these up indefinitely, which is great. Next, Ember of Ashes. You apply more score stacks to targets, pretty much allows for more potential ignitions and can stun unstoppable champions, which is neat. Next is Ember of Eruption. I personally like this one for this setup in particular, but your solar ignitions have an increased area of effect. It is a plus 10 to strength. Essentially, I want this on for the crowd control aspects of this build. If I'm sitting in my well and I get the headshot, because again, we can cause ignitions from score stacks or with raised precision while we're radiant as long as we get precision final blows that's going to cause an ignition so and we're going to be radiant fairly often so this is pretty much a free ignition from this now for the last fragment we have a couple of options here we have a few of these to run through so with ember of blistering defeating targets with solar ignitions grants grenade energy we're going to be causing a decent amount of ignition so that means we can get that healing grenade back even faster Another option, Ember of Combustion. Final blows with a solar super causes targets to ignite and creates a fire sprite. That's a plus 10 to strength. As long as we're in that Phoenix Protocol well and get a solar weapon kill, that's an ignition right there. You don't have to get the headshot like with Rays of Precision. So this one is pretty good. Another one, Ember of Char. Your solar ignition spreads scorch to affected targets. That's a plus 10 to discipline. This one is really good because as long as you spread that scorch around and other targets are already scorched, you can stack them up. And with Ember of Ashes, you have the potential to cause even more ignition. So that one is pretty good. Another one would be Ember of Solace. Radiant restoration effects applied to you have an increased duration. So that means we get a couple extra seconds that we'd normally get from Ember of Empyrean. So that means we have a little bit more of a window here with Ember of Solace. Another one, Ember of Wonder. Rapidly defeating multiple targets with solar ignitions generates an orb of power. It is a plus 10 to resilience, so if you are missing some resilience, this can make up for it. It does have a cooldown, so keep that in mind, but it is free orbs of power if you want it. And the last one that I find interesting, which is Ember of Benevolence. So applying Restoration Cure or Radiant to allies grants increased grenade, melee, and class ability regeneration for a short duration. It is a minus 10 to discipline, but as long as we apply Restoration you know, from our healing grenade to a teammate, we can have very fast ability cooldown across the board for all of our abilities. So that means we can get the healing grenade back faster. And what's pretty neat as well is that you can use a weapon that comes with the perk heal clip. So reloading after dealing a final blow grants cure to you and nearby allies. It gives you times two and your teammates get times one, but cure is also one of those buffs that you can give to the teammates and that'll proc Ember of Benevolence. So if you're just getting kills with a weapon that can come with heal clip, you can continue 
to have Ember Benevolence proc almost all the time. On the artifact, obviously, we're taking advantage of Flint Striker for Radiant so we can gain Radiant Precision, but also we get Kindling Trigger so our solar weapons will apply Scorch to unscorched targets while we're Radiant, and with Torch, we're going to deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by Strand and Stasis debuffs, so as long as we apply it or a teammate applies it, especially to a boss, that's free bonus weapon damage from there. I would recommend Har of the Flame, so casting your solar super grants nearby allies Radiant and increases the damage of your super for each nearby ally. The increased super damage doesn't really do much, but giving your teammates Radiant is pretty solid here and then revitalizing blast causing damage with a solar ability weakens champions and bosses for a short duration this one's very good especially if you want to apply that debuff so you can do more damage to those targets especially melting champions it's gonna be necessary now i personally like blast radius here so rapid final blows with rocket launchers and grenade launchers grant an armor charge i do like using rockets for this setup occasionally and having a free armor charge from a multi-kill is pretty solid then also pairing that with the argent ordnance so firing a rocket consumes one stack of armor charge granting increased damage and in reload speed after you reload or stow your rocket launcher so whenever you're using rockets in the activity it's pretty much free bonus damage it's very good for boss dps and then i would recommend wishing a being so while your super energy is nearly fully charged ability final blows will spawn orbs of power now covering the armor mods starting with the helmet i personally like harmonic siphon so when i get those rapid solar weapon final blows it creates an orb of power and also like heavy ammo finder and scout for me and my teammates because heavy ammo is pretty important in the activity on the gauntlets here i personally like harmonic loader with impact induction and focusing strike i can get the faster reload for all my solar weapons and anytime i deal damage with my melee attack i get a cooldown on my grenade and my class ability on the chest piece i like one harmonic reserves with void and arc resistance but you can switch these out to whatever you'd like in case you need solar resistance or stasis resistance anything like that you can mess around with some of these mods here i just like harmonic reserves so i get more solar heavy ammo on the boots here i put on recuperation so i get health each time I pick up an orb of power, this is more of a survivability thing because the activity is pretty tough on Legend. And yes, I'll have restoration times too, but this will help us out even more with survivability. And then I put on double solar weapon surge here. So your solar weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you have any armor charge. Your armor charge now decays over time. When you collect orbs of power, you gain armor charges. With this build in particular, you will have a maximum of three armor charges. With any of these blue mods, that'll last 10 seconds per armor charge, which means we can have double solar weapon surge for 30 seconds total with three armor charges. Now, you can switch out one of these solar weapon surges for the Harmonic Scavenger. So solar weapons get bonus reserves when picking up ammo used by that weapon, which means you can get more solar heavy ammo just in case. And then lastly on the class item, I like time dilation so that decaying armor charge has a longer duration so that 10 seconds that I mentioned gets bumped up to 15. So as three armor charges, we get 45 seconds of that bonus weapon damage. And then I got double bomber. So when I use my class ability, it reduces my grenade cooldown because I want that healing grenade back as quickly as possible. For stats to focus on, the big one is resilience. Try to have tier 10 100 resilience. We talk about it every video. You definitely want that 30% damage reduction, especially in Legend Onslaught. Next, discipline is a good one to focus on because discipline is tied to how fast we can get that grenade back and we want that healing grenade back as quickly as possible. Another stat to look into is intellect. This is tied to how fast we can get that super cooldown. You don't strictly need to focus on it because you do get 50% of the super from being in the well with Phoenix Protocol, but the other 50% is up to you. Orbs of power, damage, all that stuff. So the faster overall we can have the super cooldown, the better it is for us and our team. And strength, you could potentially focus on strength as well. Strength is tied to your melee, but we can get that back pretty quickly overall, especially if we get kills in air with heat rises. So I'm not too concerned about strength. The main one here is resilience though. For your weapon options in the primary slot, if you haven't picked up a stasis fusion rifle with chill clip you definitely want it so direct hits with the top half of the magazine cause a detonation that slows nearby targets after three of those bursts you can actually freeze the target so not only can a chill clip fusion rifle handle overload champs you can also handle unstoppable champions potentially so definitely go to shacks if you have plenty of engrams definitely turn these in to try to get a decent pve riptide or if you have a deliverance with chill clip that'll work as well. That is from the Vow of the Disciple. In the energy slot, I would recommend a primary weapon that can come with incandescent. You know, with Epichal integration, this is a hand cannon this season. We can also apply, you know, unstoppable hand cannon here so we can handle unstopped champions. You know, I have this summoner here with overflow and incandescent, Abyss Defiant that's crafted with heal clip incandescent. And like I mentioned with heal clip, you can have that cure times two for you and cure times one for your teammates. So if you have Ember Benevolence on, you can have those faster ability cooldowns across the board. And with auto rifles, you can have the overload auto rifle from the artifact. Same thing with pulse rifles. Again, I have this crafted at hortative with heel clip incandescent. 
and pulses can come with overload pulse rifle as well. So you can do that too. Callus mini tool is a good option as well with incandescent. If you want to go exotic, I would highly recommend the Sunshot. Sunshot is fantastic this season. Again, it can handle Unstop Champions with Unstop Hand Cannon, but just the amount of ad control with all the explosions across the board, it's fantastic. For heavy weapons, go ahead and toss on your favorite solar one. Again, I have this machine gun, the Avalanche with target lock, good for precision single target damage. Also with Apex Predator, crafted, recon bait and switch. This thing is fantastic as well. I can also put on, you know, something like Briar's Contempt or Cataclysmic for the linear fusion option, or I could put on Dragon's Breath. This thing is fantastic for number one, single target DPS, but also taking out a group of adds. It can also take advantage of Argent Ordnance and Blast Radius as well. So that means whenever you're using a rocket launcher, we basically get those benefits. Again, Apex Predator can benefit from it as well, but Dragon's Breath is fantastic overall. Like I mentioned, I personally like the healing grenade setup more because I can just toss it down on myself and teammates, give myself restoration times two right off the bat, and then I can proceed to get solar weapon kills and continue having restoration times two up. Once I get some precision hits or a solar weapon multi-kill, that's when I'll get radiant and I can keep radiant up pretty much indefinitely. And with all the fragment combinations that I mentioned, you can mess with those however you like. To be honest, there's there's really no set loadout for this one in particular, especially in regards to the fragments, because Ember Benevolence, I think, is highly underrated with a weapon that could come with Heal Clip. Being able to have that fast ability cooldown, curing yourself and your teammates on top of having Restoration Times 2 and Radiant, you're constantly having buffs and very fast ability cooldowns. And then obviously, once you have the super, I would try using it at the beginning of a round versus the end of a round so you can take full advantage of the perk and get half your super back. And as long as your teammates are rocking decent supers and stuff that can generate orbs, you can have the well back to back to back very easily. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my Onslaught Phoenix Protocol build. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm actually going to put the dim link for this in the description. So if you want to copy everything that I'm using, down to the subclass, the armor mods, the weapons, even the drip, if you'd like, I try to make my guardians look fairly decent for you know, whatever activity that I'm doing. But if you want to copy all that stuff, and like I said, you can switch out some of the fragments, switch out some weapons. You have multiple options with this build. So test out for yourself and let me know what you think. If there's something that you like using in particular with this build, definitely put it in the comments. In any event, if what you saw is valuable or entertaining to you, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell next to notification so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming Onslaught builds I'm going to be dropping on the channel. If you didn't know, we live stream here on YouTube, but also on Twitch and TikTok as well. So if you want help with Legend Onslaught, with the Whisper mission, with Zero Hour, anything that has to deal with this Intel Light event, we're definitely going to be carrying people throughout the entirety of the event. So if you do want some help, hop in the chat, we'll get you in the queue. But if you want to be proactive, join my Discord. That's where people are going to be chatting about Destiny 2, looking for groups. I made an Onslaught LFG role, so if you're looking to do Onslaught and get some other people in to help you, again, that's going to be a really good way to do that. Lastly, if you want to help support the channel even more so I can continue making content for you guys, you can look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it's essentially like a Twitch subscription, but it's cheaper than a Twitch subscription, hilariously enough. In any event, you're going to get access to exclusive emotes, monthly badges, and other cool things here on the channel, like early access to every single one of my videos. So if you want more information, all you have to do is press the join button next to subscribe, and that'll give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!